So see, when I get a chance to do the show, I like to bring on think tank people. I do. I think that radio is supposed to be a conversation, not a propaganda venue. So let's talk it out. And I always like to get a good guest. And I got one. I think this is our third time together, Kevin. Right? I think it may be. Yes, yes. And you wrote an interesting... uh, it's, this is Kevin Kosar, by the way, from R Street. You wrote an interesting piece for Politico that I, I, you know, I was watching your other pieces I found interesting. But this one is the five biggest myths about the post office. Now, I had an Uncle Louie who was a mailman. He was the kind of annoying guy that wore the same color socks to match his pants and would come in your house and fix your TV set. You remember those guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was annoying. And I am pretty sure he took the mail and threw it in the creek by his house because I didn't, don't think he worked a lot. But go ahead. You tell me what are the myths. <laughs> Well, these are the five myths about the big postal crisis that's been, you know, all the talk online. And, um, you know, the first myth is, I, is that there's a Trumpian plot afoot to cripple the post office. It's in plain sight, and he's doing it to steal the election. Not proven. Uh, second myth is, eh, there's nothing wrong with the Postal Service. Everything is fine. Uh, no, also not true. Kevin, doesn't it lose? I mean, I mean, we've had years where it's lost 18 billion, right? It's averaging like nine billion a year, where it's short every year. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's uh, you know, it's got 150 billion dollars in unfunded obligations and debt uh, for an organization that's not bringing in more revenues than its expenses. I don't know how they're going to pay that stuff. Kevin, I say that the CEO of Cray America was right. We don't need the post office. We should brick it up. Cosmo yeah. Kramer. I'm quoting Cosmo Kramer, my favorite think tank member. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Well, who would deliver your jury summons? You don't want to miss jury duty. And, you know. I've been sued. Well, fine, I've been right? sued a lot. Those guys find you if they have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people don't don't see much purpose to the postal service, being as it's uh, more than fifty percent of the paper mail that it brings to us is advertising. Yeah. Right now, in this pandemic, they're carrying a record number of parcels, often handed off by UPS and other shipping companies for the postal service to bring. Mm-hmm. So, I'm thankful on that count. What are I, I cut you off? I only let you get three myths out. What are the last two? Oh no. Okay, third myth was. Louis DeJoy, the PMG, Postmaster General, is a Trump stooge sent in to cripple the UP, USPS. False. Mm-hmm. Fourth, the Postal Service needs more money to handle all the election ballots. That's what the president said. Also false. Fifth, Congress is going to fix the Postal Service this weekend. Extremely false. Like they fixed health care? Are you going to... What's the last thing Congress tinkered on that fixed? Can you name me one... Uh... <laughs> yeah, and you're in a think tank. So if you can't come up with it, nobody can. Are you surprised, Kevin, at the American ignorance to the position the post office has been in year in and year out? Do you think it's just that they're numb from hearing on a Friday afternoon that, you know, at the end of the year, we have to send another $8 billion check to the post office and people are unaware of the situation of the post office? Because I remember when when Barack Obama and Joe Biden were removing mailboxes under under their administration, nobody said boo, not a word. Now this comes up and all of a sudden it's, it, it's a plot to get rid of the mailboxes. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, uh, you know, the president has not helped himself. Well, he never, uh, he I never really does. Wish he would, I wish he'd stop popping off about Postal. I mean, the other weekend when he said that, oh, yeah, Postal Service needs $25 million. That's what the Democrats want. And Post Office needs all that to deliver the ballot. No. No, the Postal Service does not need that to deliver the ballot. They will get paid by state and local administrators to deliver the ballot. So... Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, it's frustrating for me, too, Kevin. I feel your pain. I could hear it in your voice. I completely understand. See, I don't like government. I don't want to play red team, blue team. I don't like any of them. I'll tell you the truth. I see a falsehood. I see a fraud. I see the corporatism. But I, in my opinion, and you tell me what you think, Kevin, we are facing a promise from the Democrats that have become the American Socialist Party. And we're facing a promise that they literally want to rewrite our rights 
rewrite the Constitution in favor of an open system of government and the restraint being fully on the people. In my opinion, even though, and I don't like, I'm not a national populist, brother, but I'm not a Marxist for sure. So to me, this is a major, major election, and we are at the precipice of either absolutely terrible or bad. What do you think? (laughs) You know, I think what is going to be, I mean, there's the presidency, obviously, but I'm uh, inclined to think that the president is let, letting it slip away and absent something catastrophic, you know, Biden having a stroke or something like that, that it's going to be hard for the president to win. So my attention is really thinking about, like, how's the Senate going to play out? Yeah. Is it going to stay, you know, with at least 50 Republicans? Um, and that's going to be the key. I mean, that's been all the difference in the world. I mean, if we had, say... 60 Democrats in the Senate. Can you imagine the bills that the House would be sending over to the Senate, which would be sent on to the president's desk? Um, Very, very interesting situation that could be. (laughs) You mean, uh, well, look at Obamacare the last time they had that majority. I mean, I'm going to tell you the truth, Kevin. When they passed Obamacare and when they were openly bribing senators to vote by guaranteeing pork barrel, I actually thought in my own mind, this is never going to stand. This is never going to stand. There's no way they could do something this obvious. And that has that is what I feared it to be, which is the cornerstone of all socialist programs that has affected literally every human being in America. And when you look at Joe Biden promise to backdoor nationalize all employment by guaranteeing a $15 minimum wage, whether you're in North Dakota or New York, without any understanding of any of different marketplaces, you realize that we're facing what I perceive to be a Soviet Union style government versus a corporatist government. And I can't afford the Soviet style one because nobody has enough money to afford socialism. Yeah, last time I looked at our uh, national debt, the picture was not pretty. And um, I'm wondering when... When is the bond market uh, going to get rattled? When is it going to say, like, I don't know if you're really going to pay back all your debts, U.S. government? And when that happens, maybe that is the sort of shock that sobers people up a bit. Um, you know, it's, it's it, fiscal hawks in D.C. are becoming increasingly few because we, we sound a little bit like, bit like Chicken Little, saying the sky is falling, you know, wow, we hit $10 trillion in debt. This is, this is going to screw up the economy. And then the economy chugs on and debt gets bigger. And this keeps happening. And finally, people are just like, well, maybe debt doesn't matter. And you remember when Cheney said that? Something yeah, of ago? course. I couldn't believe when he, I couldn't believe when he said that. Yeah. Deficits don't matter, and yeah, when we've had the brief time we had unified Republican control of the White House and uh, both chambers of Congress, they went on an orgy of spending. Nice. Kevin, and, uh, yes. Kevin I, wanna, I would like to end it on the name of my boat, with, which is orgy of spending. I'd like to end it right there. Could you hold on with me through the break? And I have more uh, economic questions I'd like to ask you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We'll be back with Kevin Kosar after these messages. to pep it up it's a fantastic friday i mean don't get me wrong this is good around two in the morning when the bar shuts down but we gotta pep it up kid proud to be joined by kevin kosar r street now kevin you have a couple of specialties over at r street and one of them is new policy programs did you ever think that uh, with all of the things we're facing with all of the awareness of the spending and the debt and the future borrowing now granted This is the first time in the world history where the world has agreed to just shut down everything that isn't attached to government. Did you do you think, in your opinion, is it feasible to have a a, a presidential candidate promising to give you four trillion dollars in new taxes and at the same time increase your spending by four trillion dollars in new phony government cheese spending? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think that this is going to great? Is it even, let's say he wins. Is it even possible that the 535 Brooks Brothers off the rack lobbyist bag men are capable of voting for this? 
you know, it all get, it all depends on the Senate and where it's at. Um, and, uh, you know, you always got that wild card, the Rand Paul sort, who might decide that he's just going to put his foot down and create chaos. Oh. Um, I don't know. You know, it's I all hope. things where uh, uh, I'm hesitant to get into predicting the future uh, because, you know, the danger is we often have trouble predicting the past. Uh, yeah, <laughs> isn't that true? You know, I didn't come into this year thinking we were going to, um, you know, have a pandemic, have a lockdown that impeachment was going to happen. I, I mean, just, and then the politicization of the postal service and the grand conspiracy theory that's been put out there, Trump stealing the election by stealing mail collection boxes. Like I keep waking, waiting to wake up and find that this is all some sort of booze fueled fantasy. Isn't uh, it Kevin? And how about, how about how they have the ability, you know, I own a couple small businesses. We go through the licensing process. We go through the risk. We stock the shell, that nonsense. And you realize you don't own a damn thing that anybody's for anybody's opinion. Once the politicians come together, you're talking about a handful of people in the grand scheme of a country with 337 million people in it. They came together and they said, you're shut down. And for once in my life, I can't find a lawyer. Nobody says boo. And we're shut down. I am amazed. I'm, I'm disgusted at the lack of resistance to what I think in America is something that I would have bet everything I have against their capability of doing this. And you realize for the first time, you really are helpless in this country. Yeah, it, uh, I had a, uh, a lawyer, scholar guy, some time ago say to me that, isn't there something in the Constitution about the takings? <laughs> Yes, I was. And, I thought and so. It was kind of one of those things where I was like, "Wow, wait a minute." You know, maybe. I mean, if if the government's going to shut you down, wouldn't it be fair that you'd be compensated for the revenues that you reasonably could have been expected to otherwise reap? Those guys in the wigs thought so a couple hundred years ago. Um, and so, but so you know, but, but when you start doing those sorts of calculations, I mean. How much do we do in wealth generation and business every quarter? Like, it is such a huge number that we end up with something like the CARES Act, mm -hmm. which doesn't even compare to, you know, what was taken. It's, it's, and then the schemes of just throwing money at people. And the idea that we're paying drug addicts, we're paying wife beaters and pedophiles, the same thing you're paying guys that go to work every day. And that's the, the, the only kind of welfare and program that they all could come together on. You realize the future is bleak at best. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, what's worrisome is that it seems like we've got certain trends going on that don't show any sign of lacking or to say nothing of turning yeah. around well kevin the spirit of state and regulation yeah yeah it was every year well kevin listen it's a fantastic friday here on am560 and you didn't help matters i'm gonna have to do this all on my own after the break i want to thank you so much though for joining me you can find him at our street he's a wonderful guy kevin please come back and thank you so much thank you 312 642-5600 I'm going to take your calls, and uh, I'm you, know why I'm, you know why I'm stalling? Because I'm going to take your calls. I can't remember if I got a guest at 6.06 or not. This is what happens when you don't hit. I do. All right. We're going to take your calls at 6.36. So we're going to take your calls on both guests, and we're going to tell Misty, I want at least a segment in between where I could take your calls. Thank you so much.